listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible Week International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 310. We're continuing in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 10 through 12, and in the New Testament, we're continuing in the book of Hebrews. The following chapter summaries are written by Schmup.com. In Ezekiel chapter 10, the chariot with the four faced cherubim is still parked in the vicinity. God tells writing case guy to go and take the burning coals from the center of the cherubim near the wheels and dump them on the city. God's glory appears in the temple in the form of a cloud, while the sound of the wings of the cherubim grows as loud as the voice of God. God tells the writing case dude to take fire from the center of the four faced cherubim. The cherubim appear to have human hands coming out from under their wings. That's just weird. Meanwhile, Ezekiel sees how strange the wheels under the cherubim really are. Every part of the wheel is filled with eyes, and they're able to roll not just forwards and backwards, but side to side, since they're really wheels within wheels. Synchronized flying. Ezekiel explains that the cherubim's four faces were those of a human, a lion, an eagle, and that of the cherub itself. As the wheels under the cherubim move, the cherubim move too, in some kind of perfect synchronization. The glory of God leaves the temple and takes its place on top of the throne above the cherubim. Ezekiel watches as the throne chariot takes off, stopping above the east gate of the temple. God saying bye-bye to the temple and heading east. In chapter 11, the spirit carries Ezekiel to the east gate of the temple. He sees 25 men there, including Jezaniah, son of Azur, and Pelatiah, son of Benaiah. God tells Ezekiel that these guys are bad. They're falsely informing Jerusalem that they'll be safe from God's wrath. He tells Ezekiel to prophesy against them. God says that the people have been smugly claiming that they're safe in the city like meat in a pot. But in reality, all the corpses in the city will be the meat in the pot, while the people themselves will be taken out of it by the invaders. They'll be harshly judged by God, and lots of them will be killed. It's payback time for disobeying all his laws, a somewhat distant promise. As Ezekiel's making his prophecy, Palladia falls down and dies. Ezekiel himself falls down and asks if God's planning to destroy everyone from Israel. God tells Ezekiel that his own kin, his fellow exiles, and the whole house of Israel have strayed from God and are losing their land as punishment. But he's going to regather them from exile in the future and give their land back to their descendants. They'll be able to follow all of God's laws at that time, and he'll give them a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. But the people who worshipped idols and abominations will definitely be punished. The chariot with the cherubim and the glory of God finally flies away. The spirit brings Ezekiel back to Babylon, where he tells the exiles about what he saw. In chapter 12, Escape Artist. It's performance art time again. God tells Ezekiel, who's now apparently in Jerusalem, to act out going into exile in the sight of everyone by packing his bags and digging through the wall in plain sight. He'll cover his face so that he won't see the land as he symbolically walks through it. God says that the house of Israel might take the hint, even though they're so dense and rebellious. After Ezekiel does all this, God tells him that if people ask him what he's doing, he's to say that he's symbolically demonstrating what will happen to them and their king Zedekiah. He predicts that king Zedekiah will try to escape and walk away, just as Ezekiel had done. But he'll be caught by the Babylonians and his servants and troops will be scattered and killed. Some people will survive to tell other nations about their destruction and humiliation. Eat and quake. God's word comes to Ezekiel yet again. It tells him to eat bread and drink water with quaking terror and to tell everyone else to do the same. Their land is going to be destroyed and stripped of inhabitants. God says he'll put an end to the people's proverb, The days are prolonged, and every vision come to nothing. God will fulfill Ezekiel's visions of destruction and doom. 
when the people start to say that these visions probably relate to the distant future, God tells Ezekiel to tell them that they'll be fulfilled sooner rather than later. And in the book of Hebrews, continuing in chapter 7, remember, we talked about Jesus as in the order of Melchizedek. Now, Jesus wasn't a Levite. He was an ancestor of Jacob's son, Judah, just like King David. No one from Judah's tribe has ever served as high priest. But the author knows that the high priest that God appoints is going to be just like Melchizedek. He's not going to come by bloodlines, but through the power of God himself. See, says the author, Jewish law was imperfect, but Jesus is perfect, and he's coming to bring the world a new and better covenant with God. He won't be like the old priests either, who are always dying off and changing. Jesus gets to hold on to his position forever, which means anyone who comes to him can be saved at any time. Jesus also never sinned, so he doesn't have to offer sacrifices for his own bad deeds like human high priests. He doesn't have to keep burning rams and goats at the altar for everyone else because he made himself into a sacrifice by dying on the cross. His work here is done. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash story master. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Ezekiel chapter 10 The glory of the Lord leaves the temple. Then I looked up at the dome over the heads of the winged creatures. Above the dome, I saw something that looked like a throne made from a blue gem. Then the one sitting on the throne said to the man dressed in linen clothes, Step into the area between the wheels under the winged creatures. Take a handful of the burning coals from between the winged creatures and scatter them over the city of Jerusalem. The man walked past me. The winged creatures were standing in the area south of the temple as the man walked to them. The cloud filled the inner courtyard. Then the glory of the Lord rose up off the winged creatures and went over to the entrance of the temple. The cloud filled the temple, and the bright light from the glory of the Lord filled the whole courtyard. The noise from the wings of the creatures could be heard all the way out into the outer courtyard. The sound was very loud, like the thundering voice when God all-powerful speaks. God had given the man dressed in linen clothes a command He had told him to go into the area between the wheels among the winged creatures and get some hot coals. So the man went there and stood by the wheel. One of the winged creatures reached out his hand and took some of the hot coals from the area between the creatures. He poured the coals into the man's hands and the man left. The winged creatures had what looked like human arms under their wings. Then I noticed that there were four wheels, one by each winged creature. The wheels sparkled like precious jewels. All four wheels looked the same. Each wheel seemed to have another wheel sitting sideways inside it. When the wheels moved, they went in whatever direction the creatures faced. They can go in any direction without turning. And the creatures went straight in the direction they were facing. The bodies of the creatures were covered with eyes on their backs arms and wings, and all over the wheels. I heard someone describe these wheels as the wheels that spin. Each winged creature had four faces. The first was the face of a bull. The second was the face of a man. The third was a lion's face. And the fourth was an eagle's face. These winged creatures were the living beings I saw in the vision by the Kabar River. Then the winged creatures rose into the air, and the wheels rose with them. When they raised their wings and flew into the air, the wheels stayed beside them. When the winged creatures stood still, the wheels stood still. When they flew into the air, the wheels went with them because the spirit of the living beings was in them. Then the glory of the Lord rose from the entrance of the temple 
moved to the place over the winged beings and stopped there. Then the winged creatures raised their wings and flew into the air. I saw them leave, and the wheels went with them. They stopped at the east gate of the Lord's temple. The glory of the God of Israel was in the air above them. These were the living beings under the glory of the God of Israel and the vision at the Kabar River. And now I realized that they were the winged creatures. Each living being had four faces, four wings, and something that looked like human arms under their wings. The faces of the winged creatures were the same as the four faces on the living beings and the vision by the Kabar River. They all looked straight ahead in the direction they were going. Ezekiel chapter 11. Prophecies against the leaders. Then the Spirit carried me to the east gate of the Lord's temple. This gate faces the east, and I saw twenty-five men there at the entrance of this gate. Some of the leaders were among them, including Jezaniah son of Azur, and Peladia son of Benaiah. God said to me, Son of man, these are the men who make evil plans for the city. They always tell the people to do evil things. They say, There is no need for us to build houses now. We are as safe in this city as meat in a pot. So you must speak to the people for me, son of man. Prophesy against those evil men. Then the Spirit of the Lord took control of me. He said to me, Tell them that this is what the Lord said. People of Israel, you are planning big things, but I know what you are thinking. You have caused many people in this city to be killed. You have filled the streets with dead bodies. Now, the Lord God says this, The dead bodies are the meat, and the city is the pot. But I will come and take you out of this pot. You are afraid of the sword, but I am bringing the sword against you. This is what the Lord God says. I will take you out of this city and give you to foreigners. I will punish you. You will die by the sword. I will punish you within the borders of Israel so that you will know that I am the Lord. You thought you would be protected in this city like meat in a pot, but you will not be safe here. I will punish you within the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. It was my law that you broke. You did not obey my commands. You decided to live like the nations around you. As soon as I finished speaking for God, Palladia, son of Benaiah, died. I bowed down with my face to the ground and said, O oh Lord God, you are going to completely destroy all the survivors of Israel. God will bring his people back. But then the Lord spoke to me and said, Son of man, the people still living in Jerusalem are saying bad things about your family, your relatives, and all the people of Israel who have been taken away as captives. They say, Those people are far away from the Lord. This land has now been given to us. It is ours. So tell them that this is what the Lord God says. It is true that I forced my people to go far away to other nations. I scattered them among other countries, but I will be their temple for a short time while they are in those other countries. But you must tell those people that the Lord God will bring them back. I have scattered you among many nations but I will gather you and bring you back from those nations. I will give the land of Israel back to you. When my people come back, they will destroy all of the disgusting, filthy idols that are here now. I will bring them together and make them like one person. I will put a new spirit in them. I will take away that heart of stone and I will put a real heart in its place. Then they will obey my laws and my commands. They will do the things I tell them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. But now, their hearts belong to those disgusting, filthy idols, and I must punish them for what they have done. 
This is what the Lord God says. The glory of God leaves Jerusalem. Then the winged creatures raised their wings and flew into the air. The wheels went with them. The glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord rose into the air and left the city and stopped on the hill east of Jerusalem. Then the Spirit lifted me into the air and brought me back to Babylonia and brought me back to the people who are forced to leave Israel. I saw all this in the vision from God. Then the one I saw in the vision rose into the air and left me. Then I spoke to the people in captivity. I told them about everything the Lord had shown me. Then the Lord spoke to me. Son of man, you live among people who refuse to obey me. They have eyes to see what I have done for them, but they don't see those things. They have ears to hear what I told them to do, but they will not listen. They are people who refuse to obey. So, son of man, pack some things as if you are leaving on a journey. Pretend you are captive being taken far away. Do this during the day so that everyone can see you. Even though these people refuse to listen to me, maybe when they see you going away, they will understand what I have been trying to tell them. During the day, take your bags outside so that the people can see you. Then in the evening, pretend you are going away. Act as if you're a captive, going away to a faraway country. While the people are watching, make a hole in the wall and go out through that hole. At night, put your bag on your shoulder and leave. Cover your face so that you cannot see where you are going. You must do these things so that the people can see you because I am using you as a warning sign for the people of Israel. So I did as I was commanded. During the day, I took my bags and acted as if I were going to a faraway country. That evening, I used my hands and made a hole in the wall. And during the night, I put my bag on my shoulder and left. I did this so that all the people could see me. The next morning, the Lord spoke to me. Son of man, did the people of Israel, those people who always refuse to obey, ask you what you were doing? Tell them that this is what the Lord God says. This sad message is about the leader of Jerusalem and all the people of Israel who live there. Tell them, I am a warning sign for all of you. What I have done will happen to you. You will be forced to go away to a faraway country as captives. And your leader will make a hole in the wall and sneak out at night. He will cover his face so that people will not recognize him. His eyes will not be able to see where he is going. He will try to escape. But I will catch him. He will be caught in my trap. Then I will bring him to Babylonia, the land of the Babylonians but he will not be able to see where he is going. I will force the king's people to live in the foreign countries around Israel, and I will scatter his army to the winds. The enemy soldiers will chase after them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. They will know that I scattered them among the nations. They will know that I forced them to go to other countries, but I will let a few of the people live. They will not die from disease, hunger, or war. I will let them live so that they can tell the foreigners who take them away what disgusting things they did against me. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Shake with fear. Then the Lord spoke to me. Son of man, you must act as if you are very frightened. You must shake when you eat your food. You must act worried and afraid when you drink your water. You must say this to the common people. This is what the Lord God says to the people living in Jerusalem and in the other parts of Israel. You will be very worried while you eat your food. You will be terrified while you drink your water. 
because everything in your country will be destroyed. This will happen because the people living there are so violent. Many people living in your cities now, but those cities will be ruined. Your whole country will be destroyed. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Disaster will come. Then the Lord spoke to me. Son of man, why do people quote this saying about the land of Israel? Trouble will not come soon. But what is seen in visions will not come. Tell the people that the Lord God will end that saying. They will not say that about Israel anymore. Now they will quote this saying. Trouble will come soon. What is seen in visions will happen. There will not be any more false visions in Israel. There will not be any more magicians telling things that don't come true. That's because I am the Lord, and if I say something will happen, it will happen. I will not wait any longer. Those troubles are coming soon, in your own lifetime. Hear me, you people who always refuse to obey. When I say something, I make it happen. This is what the Lord God says. Then the Lord spoke to me. Son of man, the people of Israel think the visions I gave you are for a time far in the future. They think you are talking about things that will happen many years from now. So you must tell them this. The Lord God says, I will not delay any longer. If I say something will happen, it will happen. This is what the Lord God says. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 to 28. The people were given the law under the system of priests from the tribe of Levi, but no one could be made spiritually perfect through that system of priests. So there was a need for another priest to come. I mean, a priest like Melchizedek, and not Aaron. And when a different kind of priest comes, then the law must be changed too. We are talking about our Lord Jesus, who belonged to a different tribe. No one from that tribe ever served as a priest at the altar. It is clear that our Lord Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, and Moses said nothing about priests belonging to that tribe. Jesus is a priest like Melchizedek. And these things became even clearer when we see that another priest has come who was like Melchizedek. He was made a priest, but not because he met the requirement of being born into the right family. He became a priest by the power of a life that will never end. This is what the scriptures say about him. You are a priest forever, the kind of priest Melchizedek was. The old rule is now ended because it was weak and unable to help us. The problem was that the law of Moses could not make anything perfect. But now, a better hope has been given to us, and this hope gives us the confidence to come near to God. Also, it is important that God made a promise with an oath when he made Jesus high priest. When those other men became priests, there was no oath, but Jesus became a priest with God's oath. God said to him, the Lord has made a promise with an oath and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. So this means that Jesus is the guarantee of a better agreement from God to his people. Also, when one of those other priests died, he could not continue being a priest. So there were many of those priests, but Jesus lives forever. He will never stop serving as a priest so he can save those who come to God through him. Jesus can do this forever because he always lives and is ready to help people when they come before God. So Jesus is the kind of high priest we need. He is holy. He has no sin in him. He is pure and not influenced by sinners. And he is raised above the heavens he is not like those other priests. 
they had to offer sacrifices every day, first for their own sins, and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus doesn't need to do that. He offered only one sacrifice for all time. He offered himself. The law chooses high priests who are men and have the same weaknesses that all people have. But after the law, God spoke the oath that made his son high priest. And that son made perfect through suffering will serve forever. Psalm 119, verses 169 to 176. This section is called Talk, T-A-W. Lord, listen to my cry for help. Make me wise as you promised. Listen to my prayer. Save me as you promised. I will burst into songs of praise because you have taught me your laws. Let my voice sing about your word because all your commands are good. I have chosen to follow your instructions, so reach out and help me. Lord, I want you to save me. Your teachings make me happy. Let me live to praise you, and let me find the help I need in your laws. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. I am your servant, and I have not forgotten your commands. Thank you, everyone. That was day 310. Join us for day 311. We'll pick up in Ezekiel chapter 13. God changes the subject to address false prophets. God swears to punish these idolaters by setting his face against them. And then God decides to make an example out of a forest vine, exploring all of its uses. And in conclusion, it's really just good for nothing which ends up being an analogy for the people of Jerusalem. And we will continue in the book of Hebrews in chapter 8. The theme is out with the old, seeing as the Christians now have the best high priest possible, it's time to get rid of the old covenants and make room for the new. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.